Welcome back to my channel. This is Swobbly, Swobbly does stuff. And here is my final top 50 countdown of the 1990s arcade games. The absolute cream of the crop. Some crap, but mostly cream in a crop. Plenty of me waffling all over the place, giving you my opinions of the games, how I found them, how I used to enjoy them, whether I've played them or not, and whether they're any good in today's gaming standards. But as you can see, I'm trapped inside this arcade machine. Hit that like button and the subscribe button and it'll allow me to escape back into the real world so I can make some more videos. Plus I do appreciate everyone that hits that like button, the subscribe button and even that bell button. So go smash those buttons right this moment. Anyway, that's enough of me waffling for today. Let's get on with the video. Enjoy it. See you at the end. Love it. Starting off at number 50. Blockout is a puzzle game published in 1989 by California Dreams. It's a take on Tetris, or as we kind of found out a few years later, Weltris. I have to admit, I'd never seen this in the arcade. Even if I had, I don't think I would have sunk 10 pence into this. I enjoyed Tetris. I enjoyed Weltris. This I found extremely boring. Whoever voted for this one to be in the top 50 needs to be shot. Or at least thrown down a well and little blocks dropped on their head. They deserve it. Rubbish game. Didn't want to play it. But I had to just to get a recording. Number 49. Joe and Matt Returns, also known as Caveman Ninja, was released in 1991 by Data East. Game stars the green-haired Joe and blue-haired Mac Caveman, who battled through numerous prehistoric levels using weapons such as boomerangs, bones, fire, flints, electricity, stone wheels and clubs. It was bloody enjoyable. I really liked this game. I didn't see it in the arcade. I wish I had. It was one of those games that you start playing and it kind of reminds you of many different other genres. Some games you look at and think, yeah, I'm going to play that, but this is definitely one of them. This would have got my 10p, no problem at all. Number 48. Snow Brothers, Nick and Tom, 1990, originally developed by Toplan in Japan and then released in North America by Romstar and then later on in Europe. You play snowmen twins, Nick and Tom. Tasked with traveling through 50 stages, throwing and building snowballs, jumping on and off platforms, and navigating obstacles while dodging and defeating monsters. To rescue the princess. Of course it's to rescue the princess. It's a rip-off of Bubble Bobble, but it's actually really fun. Didn't play this one in the arcade, but I spent a good hour playing it when I only needed a few minutes for this. Number 47. Lethal Enforcers is a 1992 light gun shooting game released by Konami. The graphics, mostly digitised photographs and digitised sprites, uh, gave it a kind of realistic look. Got critical acclaim and commercial success being one of the top grossing arcade games in 1993, but in the United States. No clue whatsoever if it was in the UK, but I thoroughly enjoyed this game. Kind of reminded me of Area 51, but in an office. Who doesn't like shooting people in your office? That's if you work in an office. Not in real life, of course. In a make-believe land of arcade games. Love it. Now it's 46. Die Hard, also known as Dynamite Decker in Japan, is a beat-em-up video game released by Sega. It's pretty damn good. It's got texture map, 3D polygon graphics, and used a sophisticated moveset by contemporary beat-em-up standards. That's what it says on the Wikipedia. All I know is it was done with Fox Interactive and the license was stripped from them so they couldn't actually use it as a die-hard tie-in with the film. Further releases even got more stripped on the Sega Saturn and PlayStation 2. Still, it's great fun. yippee ki -yay. and all that. 45. Captain Commando from 1991 is a futuristic side-scrolling beat-em-up originally developed and published by Capcom and later ported to most other platforms. It was the 17th game produced by the company CP System Hardware and I bet every single one of them was a walking along and punching alien. Nothing bad about it. I really like these games. 
going around beating the crap out of people, firing stupid weapons, throwing them in the air. What's not to like? And this was one that I actually enjoyed playing. If I walked into an arcade today and saw this game, I'd certainly put 10 pence in it. Well worth it. All the fours, 44. Samurai Showdown is a competitive fighting game developed and published by SNK for Neo Geo Arcade and Home Platforms. It was released in 1993 and is the first in the series. It was bloody successful. It was in the top five in Japan and America. It featured hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's fun, I enjoyed playing it. Um, I actually played it for a good hour, although the recording that I took of this was the first game I played, and yes, as usual, I sucked. Certainly fun to play and definitely would get my tempi. In at number 43, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, released in 1999 by Capcom, is the third in the Street Fighter 3 series after Second Impact. It added five new characters to the roster, bringing back good old Chun-Li, everyone's favorite. Really did enjoy this game. It's fast, it's manic. I was still rubbish at it, but it was really enjoyable, really smooth. Mashing the buttons, didn't know what I was doing. No idea about special moves. It's been far too long, but a thoroughly enjoyable game. Give it a go if you ever get the chance. Time for 42. Sega Rally Championship released in 1994 by, uh, yeah, Sega, clue was in the title. It's one of the first games to actually offer 3D driving on different surfaces where your cars react differently. It was a milestone in racing games. Looking back 25 years, I think I've been spoiled by Forza Motorsport and Forza Horizon. Yeah, it was okay, it was playable. Obviously, I don't have a steering wheel. I'm using a joystick, which made it slightly difficult to skid around the corners, but it was still fun. Amazing back in the day, sucks now. Number 41. World Heroes, another SNK beat em up game. I've got to read you the plot. In the distant future, Dr. Sugar Brown, a well-renowned and famous scientist, is determined to figure out who is the strongest fighter of history and has gone to great lengths in order to finally gain the answer to his own question. He built a time machine. Nah, it's just people beating the crap out of each other. It's kind of Street Fighter. You've got weird and wonderful kind of special moves. It's actually pretty good, pretty fun. Um, you hit the buttons lightly for a short attack and press them long for a hard attack. I actually rather enjoyed it. Pretty good game. It's the big 4-0. Cadillacs and dinosaurs, based on an animated series that no one's ever heard of, puts three players against dinosaurs and some baddies. Who comes up with this stuff? Each player's got access to several attacks, two special moves, including one that depletes your energy. It's got a weird plot as well. It's in the 26th century, with a black marketeers hunting dinosaurs for their unknown purpose. At least tell us what the purpose was. It's actually quite fun. Reminded me of Double Dragon with dinosaurs. Brilliant. Fun punching a dinosaur in the face, I can tell you. Now at number 39. Dungeons & Dragons Tower of Doom is another side-scrolling beat-em-up by Capcom. They have released a lot of fighting games. Based on the Dungeons & Dragons board game, you know, the ones all those geeks play, where they dress up as weird characters, well, you get to be one in this game. Go around smashing trolls and all sorts of dragons and weird and wonderful stuff, picking up treasure, Basic attacks, jumping attacks, blocks, strong attacks, turning attacks, dashing attacks, all sorts of things. But it's basically a beat em up game and it's a fun game as well. Try it, you probably like it. I know I did. Number 38. King of Fighters 98, obviously came out in 98. Another SNK beat em up game designed for the Neo Geo arcade and home consoles. It's got so many moves, so many characters. It's one of those beat-em-up games I never played in the arcade. 
Well, I remember playing it on my Xbox. I remember playing a similar version on my Dreamcast. Can't remember the title of it, but I bloody well loved the game. It wasn't a lot different from some of the other versions, maybe a little bit updated on the graphics, and you got kind of handicapped if you won around. But still a fun game today. Enjoyed playing it. Number 37. Metal Slug X by SNK, released in 1999, was a remake of Metal Slug 2. Because Metal Slug 2 sucked. There was a lot of slowdown and glitches, so they kind of remade it, made it smoother, made it run, added a few extra weapons, made it a lot more fun to play, and I certainly enjoyed this. Good old run and gun, run around, blast the crap out of people, blow up anything that moves, aeroplanes, helicopters, tanks, save the like hostages. It's hectic, it's fun, it's enjoyable. Give it a go. Brilliant game, classic. Time for 36. X-Men Children of the Atom by Capcom, of course. Released 1994 in Japan and 1995 in North America and Europe. It was their first venture into licensing characters from Marvel Comics. It's a pretty good game, only made better if you are a fan of the X-Men or Marvel Comics. It's, it's a fun game, it's like Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo and Darkstalkers had a baby. Capcom certainly know how to make fighting games and this one, thoroughly enjoyed playing it, did have a good few rounds, love it. Number 35. Tekken Tag Tournament is the fourth installment in the Tekken fighting series and was released in the arcades 1999. It's one of those games I never got the pleasure of playing it in the arcade. Remember playing it on the consoles, I think it was more likely to be the PlayStation or PlayStation 2, something of that kind of era. But it was a fun game. Been spoiled with some of the amazing fighting games that you can get up to date. But back in the day, this did certainly rock. And it was a game that was fun. Bit crap on the graphics, great on the movement, great on the tactics, great at beating people up. Number 34. Spider-Man was released by Sega, not a bad game, could have been better, multiple levels, side-scrolling beat-em-up, and then part of a platform game as well as the camera zooms to a faraway view of the character in miniature. Lots of bad guys, Kingpin, Venom, Dr. Octopus, Electro, Lizard, Scorpion, Sandman, Green Goblin, Hobgoblin, and Dr. Doom as the big baddie at the end. Spider-Man is one of those games that I was quite looking forward to playing, capturing a few sort of like uh, gameplay moments, but I was quite disappointed by it in the end. Still a bit of an enjoyable game, but not, not for today. Uh, T3. Alien vs Predator, 1994 by Capcom before they ever thought about making a film. Maybe they shouldn't have thought about making a film. You get to play a bad guy, shoot any aliens, or you can play a predator. So much fun, lots of guns, lots of fighting, eight-way movement, jump, punch, shoot, special weapons, power-ups. It's a crazy fun game. I actually really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I can't remember if I ever played this in the arcade, but certainly worth playing if you've got an emulator load it up and enjoy and now number 32 samurai showdown 2 from 1994 is the follow-up to the original samurai showdown by snk rebuilt from the ground up extra moves certain meters that you can build up and then launch a special move that would destroy the enemy's weapons such a fun game. If you like the first one, you're gonna absolutely love this one. You could also parry, block, all sorts of things. Uh, I actually really enjoyed it. I love a beat em up game and this was pretty fast, pretty smooth, pretty enjoyable. What's not to enjoy? Chopping people to bits, love it. It's number 31. The Punisher by Capcom in 1993 based on the popular anti-hero Frank Castle and co-star S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Nick Fury as player two. It's your standard walk around, 
punch the crap out of people, pick up stuff, have some violent fun. What's not to like? I think they perfected the formula back in the 80s, carried it on through the 90s and made a crap ton of money out of it. Can you blame them? They made so many good games and with all their film tie-ins, they made a lot of money as well. Ah, if only I'd come up with these ideas, I'd be a millionaire. Now we're in the top 30. Smash TV by William Electronics came out in 1990 and made by the same guy that made Robotron 2084. It's a twin stick, joystick game, exactly the same as Robotron. One for moving, one for firing in the right direction that you point the joystick. I think they stole the idea from the old Schwarzenegger film Running Man. Kind of like that where you've got to fight and survive and it's made for TV. It's a bloody fun game though. Uh, when I set it up on this emulator, got the joystick a bit wrong on the firing. That's why I was firing in random directions, but it was still damn fun to play it. Number 29. Virtua Fighter, one of the most popular Sega games ever made, selling 40,000 arcade units came out in October 1993, headed up by Yu Suzuki, who's a well-known figure in the Sega world. It's a brilliant game. I always found it a little bit clunky, a little bit slow, but it had great game mechanics. It played well. The only thing that annoyed me is every time you hit someone or they hit you, you fell over. Yeah. Not nowadays, I want blood and guts and gore. That's the kind of fighting game I'm into, or at least dead or alive. Number 28. Silent Scope came out in 1999, released by Konami, and it puts you in the shoes of a sniper during a series of terrorist incidents. Now, who doesn't like to sniper rifle a terrorist in the head? And that was the idea. You got more points for where you shot them and how many clean shots you made. Shoot them in the head, builds up your multiplier. It was fun. I couldn't get it to work on my game box no matter how hard I try. So I shamelessly stole someone else's recording. But I will still continue to try and get it to work because it does look damn fun. Number 27. Virtua Cop 2 is another light gun game from Sega. Came out originally in 1995 and it gives you three levels to play through. It's a game on rails. You don't get to choose where you go, you go where the computer tells you. There are certain points in the game where you get to pick your path, either A or B, say, and basically, you've got to shoot the bad guys without shooting the good guys. I actually really enjoyed playing this. Bit crazy playing it with a mouse because I don't actually have a light gun connected up to my game box but it is something I'm planning on doing and when I do I will play this. 26. Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter is one of those crossover fighting games developed and published by Capcom in 1997. Also had a few ports to the Sega Saturn in 98 and the PlayStation in 99. It's pretty much the same as all the other beat-em-up games, 2v2, tag team battles, pop in, smash your player, throw him around, bugger off, chuck the next player in, oh, you died, quick, your other player comes in, smash him in the face, do a few special moves, chuck a green blob around the screen. It's bloody good fun though, it's a fighting game, what is there not to like? We're in the top 25. Primal Rage developed by Atari in 1994. It's one of those games where you think it's going to be absolutely amazing. Dinosaurs beating up dinosaurs, flicking your tails, biting the necks of that Tyrannosaurus Rex. But it was one of those games that when you played it, you were really disappointed. It's not very fast, the controls were clunky, it was a bit crap on the old graphics. Yeah, they were a little bit 3D, but it really wasn't that good at all. How it made it into the top 25, I've got no idea at all. What an absolute load of old tosh. Number 24. Gauntlet Legends is the follow-on from the 1985 and 1986 Gauntlet and Gauntlet 2 made by Atari and released in 1998. 
It took the classic two-dimensional gameplay of running round, fighting creatures, collecting treasure, picking up keys, opening doors, and made it all 3D. It wanted to be in the 90s, of course. It wasn't a bad game, to be honest with you. A little bit monotonous, didn't quite have the appeal of the original, but it was still a good game, and I still enjoyed playing it. Still worth playing by today's standards as well. 23. Soul Calibur by Namco, released in 1998. It was the one that followed Soul Edge, and I have to say it was one of the best fighting games I ever played. Never had the pleasure of playing it in the arcade, but in 1999 it was released on the Dreamcast and it was amazing. Later on it was also released on the Xbox 360 in the Xbox Live Marketplace and still forward compatible today with improved graphics and frame rates. Bloody good game, give it a go. Any fighting fanatic will love it. 22. Virtua Fighter 2, created by Yuzuzuki of Sega, very famous guy. It was one of the best fighting games out there and the first fighting game to use 3D texture mapped graphics on the characters. We take it for granted nowadays in the 3D accelerated market, but back then it was brand new. It was cutting edge technology. There were ports for the Sega Saturn as well, and everybody wanted to play Virtua Fighter 2. I was rubbish at it. I didn't want to play it. Number 21. Street Fighter Alpha 2 came out in 1996. It was very similar to Street Fighter Alpha, but with a 2 on the end, and retained a lot of the original but added so much more onto the fighting system. New additions such as super combo gauges, alpha counters, air blocking and fall breaking were all added to the new features in the game. Wasn't a game that I actually ever played in the arcade but I have played it on my emulator and I've played it quite a few times. It's a fun game, it's a fast game, it takes a bit of getting used to but once you know how to play it, it's bloody brilliant. We're in the top 20. Sunset Riders, released by Konami, is one of those side-scrolling, run-and-gun, shooting video games in the American Old West. You play the part of a bounty hunter and your job is to seek rewards offered for various criminals. Go around, blasting the crap out of people. It's bloody good fun. I'd never ever heard of this game until I started making this video. It was a game I carried on playing after I'd recorded my little session. It was really fun. I really enjoyed it. Give it a go. I died a lot and I didn't quite understand that I was going to get run over by a load of balls, but it was great fun. Numero 19. WWF WrestleMania released in 1995. Oh my god, I have never had so much fun playing a game than this. I never saw it in the arcade. I remember seeing plenty of wrestling games over different consoles and they were all a little bit crap if you ask me. But this, I wanted to be The Undertaker. I wanted to beat up Bam Bam Bigelow. I didn't. He beat the living crap out of me. All of those elbows and the splats. Wow. This game is hectic. It's brilliant. It's fun. It's such a good game. Number 18. Crazy Taxi was released in 1999 by Sega and it was one of those games that everybody loved to play, especially the one with the steering wheel where you had no idea where the hell you were going. Unfortunately, the arcade game had copyrighted music in it, so I couldn't play it and record it. I had to load up the Dreamcast version, which was the, one of the best selling Dreamcast games ever, just so I could switch the music off and get some gameplay without getting some kind of weird copyright strike on my channel. I absolutely love playing this game. It is one of my favorites of all time. Week 17. Killer Instinct, released by Midway, but created by Rare. They're the people that made Banjo-Kazooie. Well, 
They made a fighting game and originally it was going to be released by Namco, but it went through a huge amount of changes, huge amount of detailed graphics inserted into the game, huge roster of characters, crazy stuff happening all over the place. It was even a Xbox One release title, rebadged, remade, reworked, amazing game. Hope they make a new version soon. We need it. Number 16. Marvel Super Heroes from Capcom, released in 1995 into the arcades, later ported to the Sega Saturn and PlayStation in late 1997, but also slapped onto the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in September of 2012. And yes, it is a fighting game based on all your favorite Marvel superheroes. The storyline, Infinity Gauntlet, good old Thanos getting his bloody gems ruining half the universe just beat the crap out of him bloody good game though had some great fun playing it but it is another fighting game but it is one of the better ones number 15 House of the Dead 2 classic zombie shooting light gun game tried my damn hardest to get this working on my emulator box but for whatever reason it just physically did not want to play kept crashing kept glitching out on the graphics in the end i settled for loading up the dreamcast version what a memory i used to love playing this on the old dreamcast don't think i ever actually played this live in an arcade only on the Dreamcast. But it was one of those games that I used to enjoy watching other people play. But on the Dreamcast, it was one of the games that I enjoyed playing more often than not. Time for number 14. Area 51 by Atari, released in 1995, is another light gun game. The plot of this game involves the player taking part in a strategic, tactical, advanced alien response, shortened to STAR. It was a military incursion to prevent aliens known as the Kron just invading. Because that's what aliens did back in the day. Your job with your light gun, go around, shoot anything that moves. It's a fun game. I did play this in the arcade and it was one that I thoroughly enjoyed. I also remember playing this on the PlayStation. Great game. Number 13. Daytona USA is an arcade racing game released by Sega in 1994 on their Model 2 three-dimensional arcade system board. It was one of the first ever racing games to use satellite data and photography to actually map all of the graphics as accurately as they possibly could. And they recreated the Daytona International Speedway just for the game. 60 frames a second, texture filtering and mapping. Wow, Sega really banged it out of the park back then. Looking at it today, it looks like a mess of pixels, but it's still fun to play, I can tell you. Number 12. Metal Slug from SNK came out in 1996 and was the first in the series of some of the most popular games you could ever have. Run and gun, run along, shoot people, chuck grenades, blow things to pieces. Fantastic game, absolutely brilliant. And to believe that it actually started off as a game where you controlled a tank going around shooting people. But luckily for us, they overhauled the game, every single element from the ground up to turn it into something amazing. Absolutely love the Metal Slug series and I think they're even up to number six now. What a game, what a series. Number 11. Terminator 2 Judgment Day, or as it's more commonly known, T2. It's a light gun shooter based on the popular film. Released in the arcades in 1991 alongside the film. It's pretty good. It's not one of the best graphics out there, but it's fun. The idea of the game, save John Connor from a load of badass robots that want to kill you. Fire your weapons, shoot the hell out of everything, if it moves, kill it. That's the idea, and it's fun. I found it quite easy playing it with a mouse, but with a light gun, I'm sure it's much more fun. Time for the top 10. If there's one company out there that know how to make fighting games, it's Namco, and they made Tekken 3 
in 1997. It was released on the PlayStation, PlayStation 2 as part of the Tekken 5 Arcade History Mode. And it's one of those games that had blood and gore that you could turn on and off. You had multiple special moves, blocks, throws. It was fantastic fun. 3D graphics as well. What more could you ask for? Well, red blood. And you had to enter a cheat onto the consoles to get red blood. Otherwise, you got green blood. Rubbish. At number nine. Marvel vs. Capcom. Clash of Superheroes is one of those crossover fighting games developed and published by Capcom, the third in the series. Came into the arcades in 1998, was on the Dreamcast in 99 and the PlayStation in 2000. Was also re-released in 2012 for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 as part of the Marvel vs Capcom Origins collection. It's a fighting game, what more can I say? Colourful graphics, colourful characters fan favourite characters, beat the crap out of people, you know the drill, punch kick, beautiful. At number 8, Cruising USA was a 1994 release game by Midway. It was actually developed by Eugene Jarvis Company TV Games Inc. Who's ever heard of those? No one has. It was actually made on the hardware that predated what would become the Nintendo 64. It's a pretty good racing game. You got to choose between seven different cars. But the idea, race down the road, don't crash into people, get there first. Fantastic fun. Not the best graphics in the world, but it certainly looks slightly nicer than Daytona USA. Rather enjoyed playing it. Number seven. NBA Jam is another game released by Midway, quite often just known as Jam for short. It's one of the longest running basketball video game series out there. It actually had photo digitized players. It's also a game that I'd never played. I'd never ever played a basketball game, not in the arcade, not on the consoles. I will admit though, I actually really enjoyed it. Basketball, not really a UK sport, more for America, maybe Canada as well. But the game, absolute fantastic fun. I liked it so much that I've even started playing the newer versions on the Xbox. Number six. Time Crisis was released by Namco in 1995 and it is another on rails light gun shooter. It's one that I definitely remember playing in the arcade. You had to hit the pedal to stand up and shoot hiding behind a couch kind of game. It was so much fun. It was for two players as well. One of the most enjoyable light gun games I have ever had the pleasure of playing. Not quite as much fun on an emulator with a mouse, but you kind of get the idea of the game. It was smooth, it was fun. The graphics were pretty decent too. Now we're in the top five. The Simpsons arcade game released by Konami in 1991 is a very, very basic side-scrolling fighting game with the Simpsons characters. Personally, I found the game rather tedious. I wasn't exactly a fan of the Simpsons anyway, but if you did love the Simpsons and you were a fan of fighting games, then this one was perfect for you. The idea of the game Someone's stolen Maggie, kidnapped her. You have to just beat the crap out of everyone and find her and rescue her. You can throw bowling balls at people. You can chuck burgers at people. It's a fun game. Number four. X-Men released by Konami in 1992 is based on the Marvel Comics superhero team of the same name. It was based on the 1989 cartoon Pride of the X-Men. In the arcade game, you could play up to six people in a dual screen housed massive box of wonderfulness. It's a fun game. It's not got the biggest and best graphics in the world, but six players playing at once, that would have been absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, I never get to see that arcade game anywhere. I'd love to though, I really would. At number three. 
Turtles in Time was released by Konami in 1991. Unlike The Simpsons, I actually enjoyed this. Nothing about liking Turtles more than The Simpsons, I just found this a more fun game. In the arcade, you could either have two player versions or if you were lucky enough, you could get to play the four player version. It was fun. You could pick your turtle. You could beat up all the bad guys as well. It was released many different versions on consoles with updated versions of this one released not that long ago as well. It's a really fun game. If you get the chance to play it, give it a go, you'll like it. Just missing out on the top spot, number two. Mortal Kombat 2, released in 1993 by Midway, was one of the biggest fighting games ever released. It had such commercial success. Every console, every computer, Amiga, Game Boys, Game Gears, Segas, the Saturn, the Nintendo, PlayStation, absolutely everything had Mortal Kombat 2. It was based on the original game, just a little bit further along. More players, more moves, more gore, more fatalities. Such an amazing game and one I absolutely love. And the number one game of the 1990s is Street Fighter 2, released in 1991 by Capcom. Most people were either a Mortal Kombat 2 player or a Street Fighter 2 player. I wasn't a player of Street Fighter. I absolutely sucked at it. But it had a six button configuration, a huge selection of playable characters, and you could beat the crap out of people. That's what people enjoyed. Mindless violence, beating their friends to a pulp, learning all the different special moves and learning how to unleash all sorts of multiple kicks and punches to beat your opponent. A fantastic game, just not for me. Thank you for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to watch more retro game stuff, click just there. If you want to see some of my game reviews, click there. If you want to subscribe to my channel, which I really hope you do, smash me in the face. Go for it.